Zahir Davidi from Brit Am, Movement of the Ten Tribes of Israel. Our organization says that the Lost Ten Tribes are now to be found amongst Western peoples, that is the peoples of Scandinavia, the Dutch, part of the French, Belgians, people of the British Isles, including the Irish, also people, their offshoots overseas in North America, Canada and the USA, in Australia, New Zealand, and amongst this, their so kinfolk in South Africa and related areas and related peoples. These are the ten tribes of Israel. We're not saying that all of these peoples are descended from Israelites. We are saying that amongst these populations, possibly encompassing a majority of them, but at, the, at all events amongst them are to be found most of the ten tribes today. That is what the Bible tells us. That is what history confirms. Secular sciences also confirm these findings. And this is what Scripture says. Scripture, as we understand it according to the Hebrew Bible, and as supplemented by rabbinical commentaries and uh, uh, related sources. We are now about to discuss the forefathers. We are beginning a series discussing the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who were the forefathers of all the twelve tribes of Israel. Originally the twelve tribes of Israel, as you all know, these twelve tribes of Israel were together in one kingdom, but after the death of King Solomon, they split asunder, they became two separate kingdoms. The kingdom of Israel was in the north, the kingdom of Judah was in the south. Most of the Israelites, 10 of, out of the 12 tribes, were in the north in the kingdom of Israel. This kingdom of Israel was taken away by the Assyrians and its inhabitants were lost. They lost their identity, they lost knowledge of who they were. They were also forgotten, at least concerning their Israelite origins, um, in the eyes of other peoples. They became lost. They lost 10 tribes of Israel. The minority of the Israelite tribes, those who remained in the south, the kingdom of Judah, that is the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Levite, as well as uh, small representative minorities from the other tribes, they became the ancestor of the present day Jewish people. The ten tribes of Israel disappeared. They are the lost ten tribes of Israel. They are brothers to the Jews. They uh, ceased to practice the Jewish religion. They ceased to be Jewish. They were never really Jewish in the strict uh, meaning of the or sense of the word. And also, they. Uh, abandoned their faith in God Almighty and in the Mosaic laws and technically they have been declared to be Gentiles as far as uh, their obligations are concerned. In the end times they will return, they will once again accept the laws of Moses, they will once again be reunited with the Judah as prophesied in the book of Ezekiel and other books of the prophets. And all this is as subjects for other talks and other studies. We are now about or want to determine where they were, to prove where they were and to do this we can go along several pathways. One of the pathways is looking at biblical prophecy and uh, we want to look at uh, biblical prophecy concerning the original forefather Abraham and we see how prophecies concerning Abraham are fulfilled only in specific nations. And the fulfillment of these prophecies proves that the said nations in which the prophecies were fulfilled are descendants from Abraham and uh, through Abraham also from Isaac and from Jacob and from Joseph and from the twelve tribes of Israel. We will see how Abraham had been promised that he would fulfill a historical role. His descendants would fulfill an important role in world history. They would become a great and powerful entity. Other peoples of the earth would be blessed through them. One of the reasons why they would become great and powerful was in order to bring blessings on the rest of humanity. This is what the Bible says. They would comprise several distinct nations, each ruled by its own kings and rulers. That is, independently of each other, several nations, uh, all of them powerful and, and important entities in their own right, all of them existing alongside each other. They would be the most powerful peoples on earth. They would be together in definite locations, specific localities, not scattered as the Jews were to be. They would rule over the seas and they would be located in different oceans. They would be extremely wealthy through the possession of raw material resources, agricultural plenty, geographical advantages and historical good fortune. They would have an irrevocable right to the Holy Land, but this right is dependent upon 
their keeping of the law. As long as they do not keep the law, they cannot exercise this right, and uh, they also ha will have to have their Israelite identity reaffirmed. So this is another subject, another problem that we will encounter as we go along. At present, we are just concerned with proving who they are, who the lost in tribes are, and uh, and what, and how it was uh, was expressed. How God gave expression to it through the Holy Bible, through Scripture. Originally, there was Adam and Eve. They were the first man and woman. They were thrown out of the Garden of Eden for sinning. Uh, after them, all of mankind was destroyed due to sins. Only Noah and his family survived. The three sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. From Shem, Ham, and Japheth descend all of the present-day populations. All of humanity come from the sons of Noah. Abraham was a descendant of Shem. Abraham was originally called Abram. He was told by God to leave his land in ur and then via Haran to go to the land of Canaan which was promised to his descendants. And henceforth Abraham would wander throughout the land, throughout the breadth and, and length and breadth of this area. Abraham was told to leave his home and go to the land where he would be shown that he would become a great nation and be blessed and a source of blessing for others. Whoever would bless him would be blessed and whoever cursed him would be cursed. See Genesis 12, 1 to 3. The beginning of Abraham's sojourns, he was accompanied by his nephew Lot. When they entered the land of Canaan, Lot went his own way and sat in the vicinity of Sodom. The Almighty again appeared unto Abraham and promised him, All the region is an eternal inheritance, and the seed will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. See Genesis 13, verse 3 to 17. After that, four kings from Mesopotamia, from uh, present-day Iraq, at that time that was where... Babylon was found, Shina was found, uh, later Assyria was found, that was a very fertile area that was the center of world population at that time, at the time we are speaking of. Abraham went to war with the four major kings of this region and he defeated them. And after defeating them, God once again appeared to Abraham and promised that his offspring would be the stars of the sky that would be extremely numerous, see Genesis 15, 15. Abraham was also informed that his sins would have to be subjected to captivity for 400 years. And this happened after the, after the time of Joseph, after the death of Joseph, when the Israelites in Egypt was, uh, were subjected by the, by the Egyptians to captivity, to, to servitude. And from that they went out in the time of the Exodus as they were led by Moses. Moses led them through the wilderness. In the wilderness they received the Torah. And uh, after the death of Moses they conquered the land under Joshua, son of Nun, from the tribe of Ephraim. Abraham gave birth to Ishmael. Ishmael was uh, the forefather of the Arab nations, or at least of a dominant element amongst the Arab nations. Muhammad was probably descended from Ishmael. The people who gave uh, force, who gave uh, a certain uh, driving power to the Arabic nations and to the Islamic peoples are uh, descended from Ishmael. Ishmael represents Islam. God again appeared to Abraham and promised to make a covenant with him and multiply him exceedingly. Abraham was the man and father of many nations and kings independent rulers would come from him. See Genesis 17, 4-6. And also, the land of Canaan would be his. Circumcision was required. Genesis 17, 10. Abraham was told that his wife, Sarah, would be the mother of many nations and kings of peoples would come out of her. She would give birth to Isaac who would carry on the covenant of the Almighty with Abraham. See Genesis 17, 19. Even though Ishmael was the son of Abraham, he was not to be the one to carry on the covenant. The covenant was to be carried on by Isaac, the future son of Abraham, through Sarah. Abraham circumcised himself and all male members of his household. While he was recovering, three angels visited him. They bore a message for Abraham in the course of their giving over the message. The Almighty himself spoke to Abraham. The birth of Isaac was again predicted. Abraham was to become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth were to be blessed through him, as we said. This blessing was repeated, Genesis 18, 18. They will become great in order to do justice and judgment. Being coming great and mighty would be in order to do justice and judgment, which in their turn would lead to them becoming even more great and even mightier. It was a, a circular process. One thing led to, the, to another, and uh, the other led to more.
After that, Sodom and the surrounding cities were destroyed by divine fire because their inhabitants were evil. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, was saved from by, after being saved by Lot, the nephew of Abraham, was saved from the destruction of Sodom by angels. Lot begat Moab and Ammon, and uh, from Moab was to become Ruth, who was uh, one of the ancestors of King David. Later, when Sarah was 90 and Abraham was 100, Isaac their son was born. See Genesis 21 5. Sarah then, late after that, Sarah insisted that Abraham expel Hagar and her son Ishmael. God told Abraham that Sarah was right. The full father of the Arabs would have to leave. The covenant between God and Abraham was to be continued only through Isaac. Genesis 21 12. So we see that the Arabs had to leave, they had to, the forefather of the Arabs had to leave because he was not to be part of the promised people. He was to be a great nation and to have his own, his own existence in his own areas, but not together with the sons and descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So too in our time, the Arabs should be encouraged to leave, to go elsewhere, possibly to North Africa or to places in Latin America. When Isaac was grown, Abraham was commanded to take him to Mount Moriah, that is present day Jerusalem, and to offer him up as a sacrifice. Abraham took him to the spot and tied Isaac to the altar and raised his knife to kill him. At the last minute, the voice of an angel stopped him. Abraham had proved himself faithful by being prepared to offer up Isaac, who was des described as his only son. See Genesis 22, 12. The Almighty then said that by myself have I sworn by himself that the blessings therefore are unconditional. The Almighty God of Israel affirmed the blessings. Not only did he affirm the blessings, but henceforth these blessings were to be unconditional. They had to be fulfilled at some time or other, no matter what happened. Due to the willingness of Abraham to make the ultimate sacrifice. God promised Abraham that his seed would be the stars of heaven as the sand of the sea. They would be extremely numerous. They shall possess the gate of the enemies. And then will all nations of the earth be blessed. See Genesis 22, 17, 18. Abraham dwelt in Beersheba, but later moved to Hebron. Where Sarah died, was buried in the cave of the patriarchs. Genesis 23, 17, 20. This cave of the patriarchs still exists. It can be visited in Hebron. If you're ever in Israel, I would suggest that you go there. It's worth visiting. I used to live in the area, and I was a frequent visitor at this site. Later, Abraham, Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, and Leah would also be buried in the cave of the, of the patriarchs, the Baron of Machpelah in Hebron. After that, Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, was sent to Mesopotamia to find a wife for Isaac. He brought back Rivka, or Rebekah, in English. Rebekah was the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Nahor, the brother of Abraham. And the brother of Rebekah was Laban, the future father-in-law of Jacob, son of Isaac. The family of Rebekah blessed her when she was leaving to marry Isaac. They blessed her that she should be the mother of thousands of millions or tens of millions. It depends how, how the expression al is pronounced. It all events a very large number of people. And that her offspring, offspring should possess the gates of those that hate them. In other words, this was confirmed that the previous blessing that the seed of Abraham would possess, the gates of the enemies, was confirmed in the blessing to Rivka that the, her offspring through Isaac should possess the gates of those that hate them. These means, this means strategic areas, areas that are important, and this has a characteristic of, of Britain, of the British Empire, and after that of the USA today. And we have a, a separate talk on this subject. It's one of the proofs of Israelite descent, that this the fulfillment of this prophecy of strategic areas in, in the international sense, in a way that is recognized as being important as uh, giving ingress and egress to strategic regions that give uh, that uh, give uh, over uh, a military advantage against potential enemies this is what gets of your enemies means and this interpretation is confirmed by midrashim and commentators and it also is consistent with the simple meaning of the hebrew language 
Now we saw that uh, Abraham had been chosen, had been chosen, and God had chosen him as he was told to get out of his country and from his kindred and from his father's house unto the land that I will show you. And therefore he went. And uh, this was in Genesis 12 1. And uh, this is what the promise involved. Now, all of these uh, sources that we've read out to you, they may be uh, checked out. You may check them out in your Bible. This is what the Bible says. These were the promises to Abraham. And uh, the, the sins of Abraham were to fulfill them. And these promises have been fulfilled through the British nation and after the British nation through the USA today. And uh, we suggest that you consider this, read them, study them, and also compare them with the other promises and read the rest of our material, listen to other talks of ours, and take in every t everything together as one whole body of evidence with every section of it confirming and uh, complementing and strengthening the other as being, um, each part being considered as it part of a building block of an edifice which uh, makes a very strong building, which cannot be denied and cannot be countered. This is the truth. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that the lost tribes of Israel today are now to be found in Western nations, especially in those of the English-speaking world. Thank you very much. This is Yair Davidi from Jerusalem, Israel.